Okay, so let's take a minute and look at this example where you are going to be given coordinates and you are going to have to find um, various points of intersection. All right, so let's look at, at this first question. It says, given triangle ABC with A is 1 comma 3, B is 7 negative 3, and C is 9 comma 5. Find the circumcenter of the triangle. Now, before you do anything, I highly suggest making sure that you understand exactly what the question is asking for, okay? So in this case, the question is asking for the circumcenter. What is the circumcenter? That is the point where the perpendicular bisectors intersect. So let's just refresh what that means. Perpendicular bisector means that we hit it at a 90 degree angle and it cuts the side in half, okay? So that's what we're trying to find. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is I highly suggest drawing a picture, okay? So you have your picture. Um, if you don't have graph paper, that's okay. Just draw a general shape of what it looks like and then you can go ahead and label your A, B, and C. All right, so we're finding the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors. Now, we said this is the point where they intersect. So let's just think about what that means. That means if I draw a perpendicular bisector here, it's going to hit the midpoint of AC and be perpendicular to it, okay? It's also going to be where the perpendicular bisector hits AB, it's perpendicular to it and hits it at the midpoint. So this is the midpoint, this is the midpoint. And the third one would be where it cuts CB in half, okay, at the midpoint and is perpendicular to it. All right, this would be the point where they intersect. We wanna find that coordinate. So let's just kind of think about this for a second. If I write the equation of this line and I write the equation of this line, and find where the lines intersect, that would be this point right here, which is also the circumcenter, okay? Perpendicular bisector, perpendicular bisector, where they meet is going to be your circumcenter, okay? So let's just think about a couple of things that we're gonna have to find before we, before we even try this question, okay? So number one, we're going to have to write the equation of AC, and we're going to have to write the equation of AB. And we're gonna find out where those two intersect. Well, in order to get the equation of that line, number one, we're gonna to have to find the midpoint of AC, and that's going to be a point on that line. So we have to find the midpoint of AC, and we have to find the midpoint of AB. That's gonna be a point on that line, okay? So those are each points on the line. So that will give us an X, Y point on the line. Then we need to find the slope of the line AC and the slope of the line AB. But if we find the slope of AC, okay, so this is the equation of the line. If we find the slope of AC, the slope of this line will be perpendicular. Okay, so we have to find the slope of AC and then we need the perpendicular slope for the equation of my line. For AB, we need to do the same thing. If we find the slope of AB, okay, that's gonna help us out because this line is perpendicular to it, then I can take the slope of AB, find the slope that's perpendicular to it, and that's gonna give me the slope of that line, okay? So our goal is number one, find the midpoint of AC, that gives me a point on the line, find the slope of AC, take the opposite reciprocal to get the perpendicular, okay? Same thing here, we're gonna find the midpoint of AB, find the slope of AB, then take the perpendicular to get the actual slope. And then think about this, we're gonna have a point on the line, the midpoint is on the line, and we're gonna have the slope, so we're gonna use our point slope formula, which is y minus y1, equals m times x minus x1. And you're gonna fill in y1 and x1, those will be your midpoints. This slope will be the perpendicular slope of AC and AB. All right, so now let's just take a minute and see what that looks like. Okay, so the first thing we did is we said we had to find the midpoint of AB.
All right, so we have to find the midpoint of AB. That's going to give us our point on the line. All right, so let's do that first. So you're literally just taking your x1, x, you're adding your x's and dividing by 2, then you're adding your y's and divide by 2. That midpoint is 4 comma 0. All right, so that's going to be helpful because that's going to be our point that's actually on our line. Okay, so that point 4 comma 0 is that point on the line. Now we need to find the slope of AB. So remember the slope is just subtracting your y's over subtracting your x's, 3 minus negative 3. Just make sure you make that that negative because that actually changes it to a positive, okay? So, and I'll let you go ahead and try that math. So 3 minus negative 3 divided by um, 7 minus 1. That's going to give us negative 1 because that would be 6 um, divided by negative 6, which is negative 1. But this is not the slope that we want because that's the slope of this line. We need the slope of the perpendicular line. So we're going to take the opposite reciprocal, which remember that means you're going to make it positive and flip the fraction. So in this case, that's just 1. Now we're going to plug everything into point slope form. So remember, you're going to use the y of the midpoint, the slope of the perpendicular line, and the x of the midpoint. So this guy here we do not need at all. It's gone. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that in. Okay, so we have y minus 0 equals 1 times x minus 4. Now you're going to put this into y equals mx plus b form just to make it a little bit easier to solve. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to distribute the 1 and then add the 0. Okay, now we're going to do the exact same thing for the second one because we need to find the intersection of two lines, all right? So the first thing we need to do is find the midpoint of AC. So midpoint, remember, means you're adding your x's, 1 plus 9, and adding your y's. So 1 plus 9 is 10 divided by 2 gives you 5. And then 3 plus 5 is 8 divided by 2 gives you 4. So there's the midpoint, or this is the point on the line that's going to go through like this. Okay, I should have drawn this one in too. All right. Okay, then we need to find the slope of a AC. So the slope of AC, remember you're subtracting your y's over subtracting your x's. That is going to give us one fourth. But that's not the slope of this blue line that I drew. The slope of the blue line is the opposite reciprocal, which is going to be negative four. So positive, negative, flip your fraction. Now we're going to write our equation by plugging in our information, all right? So our 5, 4, that's our midpoint, and the slope of this line is negative 4, okay? So once we go ahead and plug that in, all right, it's going to look like y minus 4 equals our slope of negative 4 times x minus 5. And we're going to do the same thing. You're going to distribute your 4, negative 4, and solve for y to give you y equals negative 4x plus 24. If you have any questions on how to go from here to here, let me know. Now, we said the circumcenter is going to be where they intersect. So I need to find the intersection of these two lines. So notice what we have here. We have a y and a y. So if y is equal to y, then by substitution, x minus 4 is the same as negative 4x plus 24. All right, so let's just solve the system, combine our like terms, maybe 4x over, 5x equals 28, x is 5.6. Totally fine, okay? That's totally fine to get a um, decimal. But we now need to find the y value. So to get the y value, remember, you can choose any equation. So either this one or this one. So I'm going to use the top one because it's a little bit easier. So y equals x minus 4. So just plug in 5.6 for x minus 4. Go ahead and solve for y. You get y is 1.6. Now, since it's asking for the circumcenter, you must write your answer as an ordered pair, 5.6 comma 1.6. So that would be your final answer. I know it seems like a lot of work, but if you just follow it step by step and maybe set up this table uh, and just be very careful with your work, you'll be totally fine. Okay, and this is just um, the final slide that goes with this. This is just doing sort of the exact same thing that we did. This is just organized in a little bit um, different way. So you could also, um, you could do, you could do A, B, okay, and A, C, which is actually what we did before. I just believe I drew them in the wrong spots. Um, but here you can, here's just the work for both of those. Um, find the midpoint of each of the two sides which is what we just did, which was 4 comma 0 for the midpoint of this side right here, and um, 5 comma 4 for the midpoint here. I just added A and C, the X's and Y's divide by 2, A and B divide by 2. Okay, then you find the slope of the two sides. 
Okay, so the slope of AB was negative one and the slope of AC was one fourth. Then when you write your equation, just keep in mind that you're gonna use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. You're not gonna use negative one, you're gonna use positive one, not positive one fourth, you're gonna use negative one fourth in your work. Okay, so this is just another way of organizing it. Um, whichever way works for you is totally fine. So just make sure this is the equation right here of a b. This is the equation of a c. Okay, um, and then what you're gonna do here is, okay, make sure you solve both of them for y. This is everything I did on the previous page. Um, solve the system, you're gonna set them equal to each other, solve for x, and then just make sure that you go ahead and plug x back into your equation. All right, both exactly the same answers, just kind of organized a little bit differently, however you choose. So basically you're finding the slopes of the two sides, finding the midpoint of the two sides, finding the slope of the two sides, take the opposite reciprocal to get the perpendicular slope. Then you're gonna plug your midpoint and your perpendicular slope into y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, or your midpoint. So this is your midpoint and this is your perpendicular slope.